today I'm going to show you how to create CMYK separations for screen printing. This process is a little tricky, but once you get it, you got it. We use this to create full color images using just four colors. I'm going to be using this photo to create this CMYK art print. Let's get into it. Okay, so we open Photoshop and this is the image that we're working with. This is 12 by 16 at 300 dpi. You want to make sure you have the highest res image possible. And I'm going to convert the image to CMYK. So when you're sourcing your photo, it's best to use something that has really good contrast. Otherwise, the CMYK print, when you actually are going to print on press, it's going to seem kind of muddy. Once you're in CMYK color mode, because I'm printing this on paper, I'm going to set the photo in a document that's sized to my sheet size. The sheet size I'm printing on is 12 and a half by 19. So I have my photo centered inside of my sheet paper. I'm not going to do too much discussion about placement or anything. This is really just about the CMYK separations. I'm dropping in these registration marks on the side of my photo. I've had a few situations where this was really important, so it's best to just start with this. So I drop them in. The location isn't important, it just needs to be outside of your photo. And I come to Layer, Flatten Image. You won't be able to split your channels unless you flatten your image. Okay, now that our source photo is all set up, we're going to create a new Photoshop document to hold our films. Because once we split the channels of our source photo, the original file is gone. So we're going to create this film file to house everything. It's going to be the same size as my sheet paper, so everything is going to be placed properly. I'm using an RGB color mode in this file just because that's what my output printer prefers. First thing I'm going to do here is drop in a copy of my source photo with registration and background and everything all intact so that Photoshop places it exactly where I had it in the source file. This layer just serves as a placement guide. And from here I'm going to go channels, split channels, and this is going to create each of the channels C, M, Y, K from that one photo. So now that you split your channels, you'll notice that your source photo is gone, but we placed it in our film file, so that's all good. No need to worry about that. You can see that all four of the files created from splitting the channels are in grayscale. That's exactly what we want. So let's take the grayscale files and half tone them. The order that you do this doesn't really matter. So let's just start with the cyan. So let's select mode bitmap. And that brings up this dialog. Our input file is at 300 dpi. And we want our output to be exactly the same. I'm going to select half tone screen from this method drop down. Hit OK. And that brings this dialog up. This is basically what controls everything. So there are three controls here, frequency, angle, and shape. The frequency is similar to a mesh count on your screens. The smaller number means bigger halftones, and a bigger number means much finer halftones. You really want to get these films burned on a 305 mesh, but if you don't have access to that, and maybe you have a 110, or maybe you just picked up some screens from a local art store, that's fine too. If that is the case, I would just err on the side of caution and maybe go with something like 15 to 22 LPI. Up to you. If you're producing this for a client, you most likely want your half tones to be hidden. Uh, and in that case, I would shoot for 30s or 40s or 50s, depending on what your screens are and your whole setup. For me on this print, I'm just going to play it safe and go with 28 lines per inch. On our screen angles, 
our screen angles are going to be predefined for each channel. Sine is 75, magenta is 15, yellow 105, and black is 45 degrees. There is a reason that these are set the way they are, but I'm not going to go into all that stuff here. So let's just set these and move forward. This first file is the cyan, and the angle for that is 75. Click OK, and Photoshop creates our halftones. So once the halftones are created, the file is in bitmap mode. And in order to place it within our film file, we need to get it back to grayscale. So go to mode, grayscale. Once it's in grayscale, I select all and copy it. Select my film file. And paste it in. Since our film file is exactly the same size as our photo was, it should drop it in exactly in the same place. So as I place my cyan halftone layer into this file, I'm going to name the layer cyan so that later there's no confusion about what it is because <laughs> that happens. Okay, so we close the cyan file and continue creating the halftones. For the other three channels, I'm just going to breeze through this a little bit. Just make sure that you select the correct angle for each channel. Set it to grayscale, pop it back into my film. So now I'm starting to build my layers. And my last one is the black film. So I'll place that in my film. Personally, I like to do yellow, magenta, cyan, black for my print order. You can do whatever you want. Sometimes I change it up if I'm doing flesh tones. So now I'm just checking to make sure that where the registration mark is for my halftone file is the same exact place that it is for my guide, which is the layer that represents the original photo. Each of the four halftone films should be in the exact same place. Otherwise, you're not starting with a registered image. So now that all of my halftone films are in place and we're sure that all of the layers are lined up properly, we can delete these registration marks from the film. I'm just going to quickly select the registration marks and delete them from each layer on the right side and on the left. So once I feel assured that that's all good, I'm going to start naming, um, I'm going to start placing names on my, on my films so I know when things are printed which is which because they all just look like halftone films. So this is just personal preference. I create a group for each of the, the films because I know I'm going to add type that says what this film is. So I just create a group and for this first one, the yellow, I add one dot y first. First print is the yellow. And I come to my next one and I add a two with my color so that I know my print order and I know which color I'm printing. It's the absolute worst to put the cyan into the magenta and have to clean it out before you started. And it also helps when you go to throw your screens on press 
to know that the yellow is first and we decided that when we set this all up <laughs> and let's just go with it cool so that's all four films set up and ready to print I'm going to show you my print again I really love the way that this print came out the patterns are beautiful So I really hope this video helped you out. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Let me know what I missed or something that you're struggling with. Feel free. I'll do my best to help you out however I can.